Has Yancey taken leave of his senses? I thought he had when I heard the quarrel between him and LeBeau at the club. The spectators don't make you nervous, Derringer. Why should they? Why, indeed. After all, what would a duel at the Oaks be without an audience? We face each other here, my friend. We're actors walking on to a stage. Are we here for a duel, Mr. LeBeau? For polite conversation. You are in a hurry to get it over. Very well. Lorme, it is all understood? It's understood. Ten paces with Lorme here counting. Turn and fire. Just for saying that, Yancey challenged him to a duel. He must have gone mad. Before I knew what was happening, they started for the Oaks. That's when I came and roused you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This man to a hospital. Not the hospital. To a grave. you in my office at 10 o'clock. Yes, Mr. Administrator. Madam Francine? I'll ride back with Yancey. Wasn't that a little impetuous of you, bringing the administrator out here? Yancey, I was scared out of my wits. I never saw you like that before. What on earth possessed you to challenge that man to a duel? I had good reasons. Good enough reasons to kill Yes, you're just going to have to trust me. They did for a while. I thought everything went off very nicely. Well, it was all right. You know, as my oldest friend and business partner, I think you might show a little enthusiasm for the success of my plan. Can you tell me what is behind this crack brain scheme? Not crack brain. Unique. And it's working, Lorme. May. It's working. That's the important thing. There were plenty of witnesses. Uh, including the administrator of New Orleans. Yes. I must confess, I didn't bargain for that. <laughs> I imagine Yancey has some explaining to do. Will you stay put? Yes. I'd better play possum a little while longer. But will you tell that driver to give the horses a touch of the whip? I shouldn't want to be late for my own funeral. <laughs> driver. No matter what glib excuse you may have, is how you, my own undercover agent, can openly challenge a man to the death. Only this week I asked for your help in stopping this excessive dueling among these young New Orleans hotheads, and I find you among them. You knew dueling was illegal. So are a lot of things in New Orleans, Mr. Colton. And yet you all but commit murder. Not at all. The dueling code was observed right down to the letter. Dueling code, dueling code. A barbarous piece of piece of hypocrisy that allows men to kill each other in, in so-called self-defense. It's an old institution, Mr. Colton. So is hanging, Mr. Derringer. Well, just what was the noble cause of this quarrel? Well, Charlie LeBeau and I... Charlie LeBeau. 
He's an old friend. Was an old friend. Well, he kept insisting that the Danube River was bluer than the Mississippi. Are you serious? Well, everyone knows that neither one is blue. Well, the Danube is muddier. Captain Fry! Yes, sir. No, never mind. I could have you arrested for murder, but I probably couldn't make it stick. I'm afraid not. Well, not in New Orleans. I could put you in jail for illegal dueling. I could make that stick. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to. Oh. Mr. Derringer, I've known you far too long to believe any of this. There must be something more behind it. You haven't done a stupid thing since the day we met. Now, suppose you tell me the truth. All right, Mr. Colton. The duel was a fake. We loaded the pistols with blanks. Charlie LeBeau is no more dead than you are. Go on. Well, I met Charlie LeBeau last night at Madame Francine's. He said he was in desperate trouble. And as an old friend, he asked my help. He said someone was trying to kill him. The third attempt was made tonight. On the way here, somebody shot at the carriage. Missed me by no more than an inch. I don't do something. It's only a matter of time before they get me. How can I help you, Charlie? By killing me. What? Well, not really. In a fake duel, we could uh, quarrel about something. I understand you so far, but where do we go from here? Well, I don't know who my would-be killer is. But if he thinks I'm out of the way, he'll contact my partner, Phil Lornmay. I'm gambling on that. Well, then when your would-be assassin comes out into the open, I'll take care of him. It's my only chance, Yancey. It's up to you whether I live or die. All right, Charlie. Let's arrange for you to die so you can live. All right? Must have been a convincing duel. Judging from your reaction. That is the most preposterous story I've ever heard. Yes, it is. Isn't it? Proof! I want proof. Well, Philip Lormay. He's arranging a mock funeral right now. I hope so. For your sake. Here? I'm Mr. LeBeau's overseer. What do you want? I want to see the inside of that coffin. You mean open the coffin? This is an outrage. I'm the administrator of New Orleans. Take it out. rather heavy. Shot to the heart. You're under arrest for the murder of Charles LeBeau. Take a closer look. This isn't Mr. LeBeau. It's his partner, Mr. Lormay. Yancey, you've committed a great many outrages since I've known you. But at least they made some kind of sense. This latest one doesn't. Beginning to. Well, last night the overseer was told to pick up a coffin at LeBeau's house by noon today, drive it to the churchyard and bury it. Who gave him that message? The dead man. Lord May, ordering his own funeral. Yes, Mr. Colton. 
Dolor May thought that he was ordering the fake funeral for his partner. And then what happened? Well, there was evidently a change in plans. Mr. Lormay wasn't informed. There's only one man that can answer our questions. That's Mr. LeBeau. Only one man, Mr. Derringer. Well, I think there's another one. Meaning? You. Mr. Colton, you saw Mr. Lormay leave the field of honor alive and well. You know I couldn't have killed him. I only know there's a conspiracy going on. I know you're involved in it. I'm holding you as a material witness. I suppose I can have your word that you won't try to escape. No, Mr. Colton, you cannot. What? Finding Mr. LeBeau is more important to me than rotting in the calaboose. Well, the calaboose is exactly where you're headed. Captain Fry. Sure you don't want to change your mind, Mr. Colton? I'm sorry. You've left me no choice. So am I. Now, don't move. Cover him, Paul. <laughs> Shout, Vincent. Remember, I'm a ghost. A live one, I'm afraid. That's an odd remark. I mean, they all know it wasn't you in the coffin. They know it was Mr. Lormay. Nancy Derringer? The administrator. I had to open it. He made me. Of course. What a pity. This changes most of my plans. But what about me? You promised to take care of me. Hmm? Mr. LeBeau, you said you had plans for me, for helping you. Yes, Vincent. And you know by an odd circumstance, those are the only plans which haven't been changed. Madam Francine, there's someone in the back parlor to see you. I don't need three guesses. Take over, Pearl Girl. Excuse me, gentlemen. Francine, don't turn around. Mr. Colton will be here any moment now, and I truthfully want you to be able to tell him that you haven't seen me since this morning. You can just stop that coin nonsense. Your timing's way off. Mr. Colton was here half an hour ago looking for you. Yancy, your hands. That certainly does cramp my style. Colton tell you what happened? Yes, but what does it mean? It means I tried to do a favor for a friend of mine and ended up holding the sack. The duel was part of it then? Yes, of course. LeBeau planned the murder of his partner, Lormay. Lormay would just disappear. LeBeau was presumably killed in a duel by me, so nobody would be looking for him. But in any event, who would be on the hook? You. And how do you get off? Well, with your help, I hope. But first, I want to get out of these handcuffs. Would you have Jeremiah go get Jody Barker and bring him here? That pickpocket. I'm not interested in his morals, just his skill. Exactly. You sure? Exactly. Oh, thanks, Pearl Girl. Sure, Jody. Hey, that's the best time I've ever done yet. By a full ten seconds. Thank you, Jody. Anything for a friend, Yance. Uh, say, Yancey, you don't mind if I hang on to these, do you? Sort of a souvenir of the fastest time I ever spring the bracelets? Please do. How much do I owe you? Oh, Yancey, this ain't a professional call. Thanks again. Good evening. Oh, incidentally, Ants, they found Charles LeBeau's overseer in the river about an hour ago. Dead as a doornail. Here's that shipping list you wanted. Thank you, Francie. Yeah, only two ships sailing from port in the next three days. Is that important? Yes, Francie, it is. You see, Charles LeBeau found out that we opened the casket and we found Lormay's body. That means he's got to run. And he's going to be outward bound for anywhere as fast as possible. Yeah, the well, Liverpool star is sailing to England. It's moored at the levee. No, he wouldn't try that one. Mm, too dangerous getting aboard. Schooner Cynthia, bound for Brazil. It's anchored in the Delta off of Slaughterhouse Point. That's way downriver. Sure, if a man wanted to get aboard her, it'd be very easy from the back country. Nobody could see him. 
By your St. John, perhaps? Perhaps. Well, we just have to find out. Thank you, Francie. Madam Francine? Yes? There's something wrong. That's the understatement of the evening. Oh, I mean with the money. I've been toting up the receipts. What's missing? It's not what's missing, it's what we've got. There's $5,000 too much. $5,000? $5,000 too much? $5,000. Le Beau. That's right. He was a big winner last night. Mm. He forgot it in the excitement when Yancey challenged him. That's wonderful. Suppose he never comes back for it. Suppose he does. The trail down river to Bayou St. John. Pass through the delta where the big gators lie back in the swamps. We pulled our way looking for a sign. We found one. He'll be along. Good evening, gentlemen. Waiting for someone? Like who? Like the bow? Um, waiting for someone? Check named all me. We're supposed to pick him up here and take him out to a schooner standing by. How soon? He said he'd be here as soon as he collected a debt. A debt that was owed him from last night at a gambling house. Oh. What? Jokes. Did you find him? Not quite. Oh, no. Matter of fact, I thought I might catch him here trying to collect a debt from you. He was ahead 5000 last night when you challenged him. He left it behind. He didn't think he might need it so desperately, then. I don't get it. You're not alone. Well, actually, I've just figured it out myself. You see, Mr. LeBeau and Mr. Gourmet had a very successful partnership. Mr. LeBeau got greedy, wanted to be the sole survivor of the partnership. Without breaking the law. Yes. So he pretended an assassin was after him and duped me. You? Him? Into a fake duel for the sole purpose of burying Mr. Lorme forever in a coffin that's supposed to be empty. Then the bow takes over the business. The assassin never shows up. He comes out of hiding, thanks you for your efforts. And Mr. Lorme sells out, theoretically, and goes to China where he's never seen or heard of again. The only trouble is that Mr. Colton has a campaign on against dueling. He forced him to open the coffin. And that ruined the whole thing. Really. Now, if we all remain quiet and reasonable, this charming lady won't get hurt. Nancy, move up against that wall, facing it. Mademoiselle, you will give me what's in this safe. A part of it's mine. But I won't trouble you for the distinction. All of it, quickly. Is that right, Charlie? On a nose, Yancey. I regret to say. Thank you, my dear. Now you will escort Mr. Derringer into the next room. Quickly. Yancey, move. Oh, no. 
of course. Yes, Mr. Yes, yes. Reading sign on the ground around the campfire told me that Pahu was captured. He was on his way down river. The coat. Danger. I presume this is Mr. LeBeau. That's right. Last time we had the right coffin with the wrong man. You think you can straighten it out this time? I'm sure I can. Thank you. My pleasure. 